Welcome to Accounting 101 Lesson 3. This is going to be double entry bookkeeping for cash sales and cash purchases. So objectives for this session then, we're going to be continuing to apply the basic principles of double entry bookkeeping. We're going to be entering cash sales and purchases into the T accounts. And again, as usual, we'll be double checking that our debits and our credits, when we take one away from the other, equals zero, meaning that the double entry is arithmetically correct. Okay, so cash sales and purchases then. Cash sales or sales revenue, <clears throat> these are goods that are sold to the customer and payment is received immediately, either by cash or by check. So cash sales, the term cash doesn't mean that they've necessarily been paid for in cash. It just means that the payment has been received instantly from the customer. There's been no credit allowed. So the distinction we're going to be making is between cash sales and purchases and credit sales and purchases. But this session will just concentrate on those that are paid for immediately. Um, Cash purchases, these are goods that are bought for resale and paid for immediately. Now, with the word purchases, um, it's a noun. Um, it means goods that are bought for resale. They're a type of expense in our accounts. Now, we need to be careful because obviously a business can purchase anything. We can purchase assets. Um, so purchases, with an S on the end, is different. It's goods that are bought for resale. And our purchases, <clears throat> if they're not sold at the end of the year, become our closing inventory. So important distinction there between just purchasing something generally and purchases as a specific noun. So these, as I said, are goods that are bought for resale. And because they're cash purchases, we've paid for them immediately, either by cash or by check, or we could have paid them by bank transfer or credit card, a whole host of other ways of paying for them. But the important thing is that we've paid for them at the time. The supplier hasn't allowed us any credit. So the double entry for sales then, debit the bank if we've received the money into the bank account or the cash account if we've received cash and credit the sales account. So the sales revenue account we need to credit. So the asset account has increased. We've debited either the bank or the cash, whichever is the appropriate asset. And so does the income account. So we've credited the income account. And as always, the net effect, one minus the other, is zero. Purchases, we're going to debit the purchases account. Remember, this is an expense, so it's going to be on the debit side. And then we're going to credit the bank if we paid for it by check or by bank transfer, or we're going to credit the cash account if that's how we've paid for these purchases. Either way, the purchases, the expense account increases, and the cash account or the bank account, the asset, decreases. We've credited it. And again, the net effect equals zero. Okay, so if you can still remember what the dear clip stands for, remember it was drawings, expenses, assets and trade receivables on the debit side. And the credit side was capital, liabilities, income and trade payables on the credit side. So expense account on the debit side increased the expense. If we're paying for something, we're reducing the asset. So the debit and the credit both happen within this dear <clears throat> Okay, so let's think about what the double entry would be for the following transactions and then post them using a purchases account and a sales account. So if we sell £500 worth of goods to a customer who paid by cheque immediately, we've received the money that's going to go into the bank account because they've given us a cheque, so we can't do anything else with that cheque. So we're going to debit the bank account and we're going to credit the sales revenue account. Selling goods of £100 to a customer who's paid us in cash. This time it's the cash account that increases. So we're going to debit that asset, the cash account, and credit sales. If we buy £2,000 worth of purchases and we pay for them immediately by check, that money is coming out of the bank account. So we're going to debit purchases. That's the expense that's increased. And credit the bank account to reduce the asset. £300 worth of purchases that we've paid for in cash. This time we're going to still debit purchases, but this time credit cash. So the asset has reduced, so debit purchases and credit cash. So let's have a look at that in the T account. So remember the sales account is always going to be on the credit side. So always credit sales with £500 in this case and debit the bank account. So remember that um, as before, this is showing the transaction number, whereas in real life, this would probably be a date. This might have happened on the 1st of January, so we'll be writing 1-1 one, one there, 1-1 one, one there. Um, £500 recorded in the sales account, that's the income account, so it's on the credit sales side of that. Remember to show where the other half of the entry is, so we've made sales, how do we receive that money? 
that's come into the bank account. And if we look at the bank, we've increased the asset by £500. Why has £500 been paid in? We look at the detail there. It's to do with sales. So remember, we're cross-referencing and creating an audit trail every time. When we sell the £100 of goods to the customer who paid cash, we can pop that into the sales account, credit the sales account. This time the money was received in cash. So we show that as the detail. And then we open up a cash account and we can pop in the debit side of the entry there. So debiting the cash account with £100 that's come from sales. So again, we're able to cross-reference, create that audit trail. <coughs> Excuse me. Number three, we've bought £2,000 worth of purchases. So we're going to have to open up a purchases account. We paid for it immediately by cheque. So that money is coming out of the bank account. So you can see there, £2,000 has come out for transaction three, £2,000 worth of purchases. And remember, purchases is an expense. So we're going to be debiting the purchases account. And we're saying how we've paid for it has come out of the bank account. So again, we've got that link between the two accounts, that audit trail. And then the final transaction here, we've paid for £300 worth of purchases that's come out of the cash account. So we've credited cash and we're going to debit purchases with that money there, £300. OK, so you'll see that on the sales account, if you've done it correctly, all of your transactions should be on the credit side. You should never have a debit entry on the sales account. And with purchases, it's the opposite way around. We should always have just debit entries. There shouldn't be any credit entries on the purchases account unless there's been an error that needs to be corrected but generally sales is always a credit purchases is always a debit now like with all double entry um, exercises we just need to do a quick check make sure that the debits and the credits agree and that the double entry is arithmetically correct and as i've said before i will run a session on uh, how to balance off the t accounts in a more formal way but just for our beginner level we're just checking that the debits and credits agree and they do. So four simple rules to help us solve any double entry. Whenever we receive money, always debit the account that it's gone into. So has it been received as a bank transaction? Did you receive a check from a customer? Have you received cash? Has it come via an internet transfer? Whichever account has received the money, the bank or the cash, always, always debit it. OK, doesn't matter what the source of income is. If we've paid money out, always credit the bank or the cash account. So if you remember those two, that money received is on the debit side of the bank or cash, money paid out is on the credit side of the bank or cash, then you know that you've got to do the opposite entry somewhere else. So for example, money received, we need to think about the source of the income. So we've debited the bank account, we may need to credit sales, or we may need to credit a loan account, if that's where the money's come from, it's been borrowed, it's a liability, or we may need to credit capital introduced. With money paid out, we're always going to be crediting the bank or the cash account, but then considering why has that money been paid out? Where do we need to record that expense or that repayment of a debt or whatever it was? So whatever's caused the outflow, debiting purchases, if we've bought purchases, debiting owner's drawings, if it's the owner that's taken money for their own use, debiting wages, if we've paid wages, debiting a motor vehicle asset account, if that's what we've bought. OK, so really simple money received, always debit the bank or the cash money paid out, always credit the bank or the cash. So try and commit those two to memory, along with the fact that sales, we will always be crediting the sales revenue account. So however we make the sale, the credit side of the entry is always going to go to the sales revenue account. We then need to consider what happens about the debit. So that's going to depend on how and when the customer's paid us. So if the customer's paid us immediately by bank transfer, we're going to um, credit sales and debit the bank account. If they've paid us by cash, still credit sales, but debit the cash account. If they haven't yet paid us, and I'll talk about this in a later um, episode, then we're going to still credit sales, but this time we'll be debiting a customer account, the trade receivable. Okay, and purchases, always, always on the debit side. So always debit the purchases account. When we make purchases, we buy purchases, goods for resale. And then the credit, again, will depend on how we've paid for that. So if we've paid for it through the bank account, credit the bank. If we've paid for it by cash, credit cash. If we haven't yet paid for it, then we're going to need to credit a trade payable, a supplier account. So if you can just remember those four things, I think that can solve pretty much anything. Okay, so hopefully you've uh, continued to apply the basic principles of double entry bookkeeping. We've looked at how cash sales and purchases are recorded in the T accounts, and we now have an understanding of what we mean when we say cash sales and purchases could have been paid for or received through the bank or the cash. It just means 
that payment has been received or made instantly. No credit has been allowed. Um, and then we did, as usual, double check that the debits and the credits came down to zero, one minus the other. Thanks very much for watching. <laughs>